Some 20 years ago, I received a letter from a woman named Lydia. And in her letter, Lydia was describing how consuming a blue green algae for about a year, uh, it eliminated all of her third degree burn scars that she had had on her face, chest, and arm for about 50 years. So the understanding of what this blue green algae was doing in the body is really what led me to stem cell research. So we'll talk about stem cells. When uh, most people think about stem cells, it's a treatment. You go somewhere to get stem cells uh, for a disease or for longevity, and these stem cells oftentimes come from the bone marrow, from the blood, from fat tissue. In other words, they're already in your body. They're not better because we take them out and put them back in. So to me, the question 20 years ago in my mind was if stem cells have such immense regenerative properties, what are they doing in the body? And is there a way of tapping into a regenerative potential of our own stem cells? But before I answer that question, I think it's important to establish the crucial importance of stem cells in human health by positioning them at the two extremes of what they represent for human health. On one hand, they're absolutely incredible regenerative potential, and on the, the other end, the extreme limitation that they impose on human health. So let's start with the first one, the incredible potential of stem cells. Here's a study done by the group of Doris Taylor. She took the heart of a mouse, and then in the cardiac tissue, they circulated digestive enzymes that completely digested the heart muscle. So 12 hours later, there's nothing left. The only thing left is the soft skeleton of the heart, the connective tissue of that heart. And on that connective tissue that still contains the trace that it was the heart, they put the stem cells from that mouse. And within about a week, they had a beating heart in a test tube. That is the power of your stem cells sitting in your bone marrow right now. You'll never be without a heart or a heart to rebuild, but you may be with a damaged heart, damaged liver, damaged pancreas. So if stem cells can repair a heart, an organ that is not known to repair easily, just imagine what they can do for the rest. And at the other end of the spectrum, you have the reality that we have evolved over tens of thousands of years with a life expectancy of 30 years of age. Longevity has never been selected in our evolution. Our power to heal was not needed beyond 30 years of age. So today we're born with red marrow that makes stem cells. And as we age, that red marrow converts into fatty marrow that does not make stem cells. By age 30, we've lost about 90% of our red marrow. And that is totally reflected by a decline in 90% of the number of stem cells in circulation. Stem cells are your repair system. Anytime you have a problem, an injury, the affected area will trigger, stem will trigger the release of compounds that will go to the bone marrow, that will trigger the release of stem cells from the bone marrow. As stem cells circulate everywhere in the body, the damaged area will release other compounds that will attract stem cells to that area. Stem cells will migrate into tissue, multiply, and become cells of that tissue. It is your repair system since the day you are born. Remember when you were a kid, the injuries that you may have had. Actually, you probably don't remember them because they healed super quick and they're gone. You have the same injury today. They don't repair as quickly as they used to, and sometimes they linger for quite some time. It's because you don't have as many stem cells as you used to. They are your repair system. More stem cells in circulation means more stem cells to participate in this process of tissue repair. Two people with the same broken bone. The one that heals the fastest and the best just happens to have more stem cells in circulation. So if that is true, scientists ask the question, if we have a means of putting more stem cells in circulation, could we change the course of disease development? And these studies were done. If you increase the number of stem cells in circulation, many studies have shown you can either improve or sometimes even reverse heart disease, Parkinson, Alzheimer's, uh, atherosclerosis, diabetes, problems touching so many different aspects of human health. But I think that the greatest discovery in the field of stem cell research for you, because it touches every single one of you, is that yes, stem cells are the repair system of the body, but they are also the maintenance system of the body. When you are 60 years old, you don't have a 60-year-old liver, 60-year-old pancreas, or 60-year-old heart. Everything is constantly going to a process of tissue turnover. You have a new liver every two, three years, new skin every month, half of a new heart every 25 years. Turnover means you lose cells every day, and you need to replace them in order to maintain organ function. That's the role of your stem cells. By age 30, you've lost 90% of them.
Somewhere in your 30s, you discover you're not Superman, you're no longer Wonder Woman. From that day, you don't have enough stem cells to replace what is lost, and from that day on, you start to accumulate a deficit that will result years down the road into some sort of age-related diseases. So this understanding of the stem cell development of disease, stem cell part of disease formation is something I published 10 years ago. And in that paper, I was suggesting there's one way to test if this is true. Let's count the number of stem cells in people who have developed all kinds of age-related disease, and let's compare that to healthy people of the same age. And today, many of these studies have been done. If you count the number of stem cells in people who have developed heart disease, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, lupus, erectile dysfunction, high blood pressure, uh, Parkinson, Alzheimer's, and the list keeps growing, these people all have 50% or less than the number of stem cells that you find in healthy people of the same age. So the conclusion here is more stem cells in circulation means better ability to repair and better ability to keep the health that you have today for the decades to come. So how can you put more stem cells in circulation? Fasting more than three days will put more stem cells in circulation or intense physical activity like running a marathon. You cannot fast all the time and you cannot run a marathon every day. So how can you put more stem cells in circulation? And that's really my work for the past 20 years. So the blue-green algae that Lydia had taken that removed all of her scars, I also had other stories from people who reported repair of uh, heart disease, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, the brain, the lung, so many different aspects of human health. We had no understanding of how it was working. So we basically hypothesized, so we are in the early days of stem cell research, we hypothesized what if that plant was working as a stem cell mobilizer, putting more stem cells in circulation. So we acquired the equipment to count stem cells and we started to test this plant. And very soon we discovered that indeed this is how this plant is working. It is putting more stem cells in circulation about an hour or two after consumption. So after documenting that this plant was having an effect on stem cells, knowing that we have evolved in symbiosis with the environment, there has to be other plants having an effect on stem cells. So how do we find them? So we looked at, at plants that had been associated historically to a broad variety of health benefits, and we tested all these plants. And as we engage into this whole process, it led me to go to remote areas of the world, places that don't necessarily have access to the general marketplace, if you want, of the world, like what are they using on the Tibetan plateau there for many kinds of problems. So you have sea buckthorn berry utilized in, uh, tr in traditional Chinese medicine, Tibetan medicine, Mongolian medicine, used for heart disease, cardiovascular disease, lung disease, uh, diabetes, and to help people repair from bone fractures and burn to the skin. You look at the spread, it's telling me we probably have an effect on stem cells. So we tested an extract from seabuckthorn berry, and we documented that it significantly increased the number of stem cells in circulation, uh, something like 40% within about two, three hours of, of, of consumption. Then we went to, uh, I worked with scientists who went to Papua New Guinea, South America, uh, Madagascar. And in Madagascar, they have a product that is made for centuries. It's called Vahona. They have in Madagascar about 60-something species of aloe, but there's only one that they use to make this product, Vahona, uh, in its aloe macroclada. It's been used for all kinds of disease and to help older folks work in the field until the, in their 80s, 90s. So we developed an extract from aloe, aloe macroclada, we tested it, and so far it's the plant that is giving us the greatest response in terms of an increase of stem cells, uh, number of stem cells in circulation, up to close to 100% increase. That means doubling the number of stem cells in circulation. You take a dose of that product and you've put about 10 million additional stem cells in your blood circulation. Sit down with that number and what it means when you do this for longer periods of time. It really boosts the, the body's ability to repair. So the message here is to understand that more stem cells in circulation means that your body can repair better. Always keep in mind, let that sink in. Your own stem cells can rebuild a heart. You will never be without a heart, but your stem cells can do a lot of things you know, that, that would equate to that kind of power. So more stem cells in circulation means you can repair better. Keep in mind, this is your repair system. What do you do when you have a cold? You support your immune system. What do you do when you have something in your body that is not working properly? 
you tap into your repair system. It's just that this is a novelty. The last system was documented in the early 1900s. A century later, we discover we have a new system that we did not, did not even know we had. It's your repair system. You want to repair? Support your repair system by putting more stem cells in circulation. If you have more stem cells in, cir in circulation today, you can repair better with the problem that you have, but you can keep the health that you have today for the decades to come. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, Christian.